Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Jessalyn Gerpoltz. I'm the director of The Next Scene. We will be doing Hedda Gabler by Ibsen. Um, while I'm talking, I invite both my actors to turn their video and sound on and get set up while I'm given some background information. Um, if you're not familiar with the play, um, basically Hedda is kind of the it girl around town. She has been receiving many marriage proposals for her entire life but she has accepted none of them. Um, she's now 27 years old. She lives, her father has passed away. And so as a result, she's accepted a marriage proposal from Tesman. Um, and everybody's kind of confused as to why. Um, in this scene, um, we're doing two scenes. The first one, um, her husband Tesman has been out all night with a bunch of the guys, including uh, a former friend of hers, Eilert Loveberg. And he has come back, uh, Tesman and Eilert are both intellectuals and competing for a job in town. So I will turn my mic off and let the act. What are you doing up so early, huh? It is early, isn't it? Yeah, I thought you'd still be sound asleep. What do you know? Keep your voice down. Mrs. Elstead is still sleeping in my room. Has she been here all night? Oh, well, no one came to walk her home. Ah, yes. Hmm. <laughs> Did you have a nice time at Judge Brock's? Were you worried about me? <laughs> huh? Not in the least. I just wondered if you had a good time. Yes. To my surprise, I did. Hmm. Especially in the beginning, when I read me part of his book. We got there more than an hour ahead of time, and if you can imagine that. All right, well, and, tell me about and, it. <laughs> and it, we got there more than an hour ahead of time, if you can imagine that. And, and Brack had all sorts of arrangements to make, so I read to me. <laughs> I, Hedda, I, I, I don't have the words to, to express it. it I think it's the most remarkable book of all time. Can you I imagine? didn't mean the book. <laughs> but I, I have to confess something, Hedda. After you finished reading, an awful feeling came over me. Oh, what awful feeling. Envy. I envied Isla being able to write a book like that. Can you imagine? I certainly can. But then I, but then I, I pitied him at the same time with all his talent and... He's so beyond anyone's help. You mean a man with his passion for life sets him apart from other men? No, not at all. I, I mean, he can hold his liquor. Well, well, enough of all of this. How did the evening end? Well, <laughs> to tell you the truth, it all turned into regular Bacchanal. And, and Loveberg, did he have vine leaves in his hair? I didn't notice. But he did give a long drunken speech about the woman who had inspired him in his work or something like that. Did he mention her name? No, he didn't. But he, he must have meant Mrs. Elstead. I mean, who else could it be? Right. Well, uh, where did you guys leave him? Bah, on the road back to town. The last few stragglers left the party about the same time and Brack came with us to get a breath of fresh air. And we'd agreed to get Eilert home safe. He could barely walk. <laughs> no doubt. Here's the, here's the saddest part. Hedda, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm almost ashamed to bring it up for Eilert's sake. And you mustn't tell us all. Of course, of course, go on. <sighs> well, as we were getting near town, you see, I had to stop by the side of the road for a minute or two if you understand what I mean. Yes, yes. So and as I caught up with them, what do you think I found? Lying in the road, huh? How should I know? <laughs> you, you, have, you have to promise me not to tell anyone, Hedda. For Eilert's sake, do you hear me? I found this. 
Is that? His manuscript. The only one in the world. And he went and lost it. And he was too what? far gone to even know. Can Why you... didn't you give it to him right away? I didn't dare, not in the condition he was in. Did you tell anyone else that you have it? <laughs> Absolutely not. It would be humiliating for him before it got out. So no one else knows that Eilert Lovebrook's manuscript is here? No. And it has to stay that way. What did you tell them after that? I didn't talk to him again at all after. I mean, when we got back to town, Eilert and two or three of the others wanted to keep on drinking. And what about you? Went. What about you? Uh, one of the fellows invited us over to his place for a cup of coffee. I have to, I have to get some rest. Well, once I had time to sleep it off, I'll, I'll make sure to bring it back to him. No, no, don't, don't give it to him. Not right away, I, I wanna read it first. <laughs> Hedda, darling, I, I can't. I, I, I really can't. You can't. Well, think how he's going to feel when he wakes up and finds the manuscript gone. This is the only copy he told me so himself. Well, couldn't he write it again if, if he had to, I uh, mean? Well, I don't, no, I don't, I don't see how. I, not without the original inspiration, you know? Yes, the inspiration. Uh, a letter came for you. Oh, when? Early this morning. What's Aunt Julie's? What was wrong? It says it's, it's Aunt Rena, she's dying. What else is now? She says if I want to see Aunt Rena again, I need to come right away. Had a, do, do, do you think you could, could come and, and, and keep me company? No. Just, just no. think about it. No, don't. I, I, I can't stand to be around sickness and death. It's so ugly. All right, all, all right, all right. Uh, my hat, my hat, my coat, my, my coat. Oh, in the hall. I, I hope I'm not too late, huh? You seem to be more upset about your Aunt Rena's death than Miss Tessman does. It's not just Aunt Rena. I'm terribly worried about either. Well, have you heard anything? I went by his hotel this afternoon. I wanted to tell him his manuscript was safe. Did you see him? No, he wasn't there. But afterward, I ran into Mrs. Elvstead. She told me he came here early this morning. Yes, and right he, after you left. And he told her, he tore his manuscript to pieces. Yes, he did. Huh? God, he must have been out of his mind. Is that why you didn't give it back to him? Something like that. But of course you told him we had it. No. Did you Good. tell Mrs. Elstad? No, I thought it better not. But you should have told him. He might hurt himself. Give me that manuscript, Head. I'll take it to him right away. And where is it? I haven't got it. I haven't got it. What in the world do you mean? I burned it. Every bit of it. Burned? You burned Eilert's manuscript. Keep your voice down. Someone might hear you. Burned? Oh, you, you couldn't have. But I did. You know what this is, Hedda? This is an illegal disposition of lost property. Do you hear me? Just ask Judge Black what it is, he'll tell you. 
I suggest you leave Judge Brock out of this. This is insane! Why did you do it? What, what possessed you? Answer me, huh? Well, I, I did it for you, George. Oh, for me? Well, early this morning, when, when you told me how you and oh, we got were right... I didn't mean it, literally. I, well, I, I couldn't bear it to, to think of him overshadowing you, making you feel that way. Is it true? But, but I, I never thought you loved me that much. Well, it's time I told you. I, I sh oh no, I, no, just ask Aunt Julie, cause she is dying to tell you anyway. Oh. <laughs> I think I understand, Etta. God, is it really true? Huh? I won't be able to survive this. <laughs> what did you, what did you say, Hedda? All these absurdities, George. What, you think I'm being absurd? Well, well then I better, I guess I better not tell Berta after all. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Why not tell her that, too? No, 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 no. Not yet. But I will have to tell Aunt Julie. Anne, hey, you started calling me George. Aunt Julie would be so happy. <laughs> when she hears that I burned either Loveberg's manuscript for love of you. No, no, no. No, no. Not that. No one needs to know about that. But that you, Hedda, burn for me, and Julie can know that much. I wonder if this sort of thing is as normal among young wives, huh? I think you better ask Aunt Julie that question too. I will. One of these days. Oh, yeah, with the manuscript. Oh, the manuscript? Good, good God, what'll become of poor Eilert now? <laughs>